touch me, you're not gonna do nothing, you are not above me, I bet you wish you was me, I know that I know. What is poppin' everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Only Friends Podcast. I want to give a big thanks to our sponsors over at WPT Global. They're running satellites every single day, giving away a package, one, one a day during the week, and eight, I said eight, on Sundays. That's that, a hell of a package. That's a sick mm-hmm. package. Beefy package. Download WPT Global now. Try to get your shot. What is popping, everybody? What's going on? What's I have a happening? question. I actually have a question about the packages because I've been seeing you guys on your social media giving away packages. Mm. Do the people that win those things that you're giving away, do they have to be located in the United States? No, it could be anywhere. Oh, okay. We are joined by Johnny fucking vibes today. I got today. super excited about the packages. <laughs> I had to bring them up. <laughs> what is good, man? I'm actually super excited to be here. It's actually really fun to be welcome, with you guys. The show. I've been a fan since the very beginning. And I've been a fan since before you actually started the Only Friends podcast because since the beginning of when I've been creating content, you guys have been in the in the game too, Solve for Why. And game recognized game. Like I'm known for the high quality or whatever. Mm, high but quality. you guys are actually like you got, there's video banks around here. You guys got a guy controlling cameras, making sure the mic levels are good. And from the very beginning, I was texting you guys, I was like, hey, the lighting is bad on this, and you guys were fixing everything, you guys were getting all the echoes gone and everything, and it is dialed in now. Like, when you put the camera on Conrad over here, it looks like a cinema. Like, look at this. Look at the lighting there. The shadows that cast over his yeah, face. Let's, let's talk about that the lighting a little bit. Let's talk about that lighting a little bit more. Did you guys more. bring a lighting expert in, or what's going on? I'm not going to Just stop. No, just no, just no, no. Johnny's That's watched all the episodes. Management. He knows about fucking... I may have found my niche. You know, I, I might have this little thing going on. Somebody turned off Conrad's backlight right now, which I'm not happy about. But, you know, we'll uh, we'll get it going. Yeah, uh, it looks great. So yeah, like I'm definitely happy to be here. I think you guys are doing a great job. I also noticed that Berkey was kind of the man holding this together at first, and he's handed over the reins to Conrad. And, <laughs> I, and, and I love it. I love that. Uh, That's uh, a good example of what's going on right now. The uh, reins are just gone. Conrad, Bro, I'm, pra- I'm praising button. you right now, and you just you just leave. <laughs> No, my point is, is that uh, I like Look to see... Look how much bigger Lynn is. <laughs> <laughs> right now. He's back, everybody. It looks, like, it looks like a movie poster for my giant. <laughs> I also have the seat, yeah. It smells what? like cabbage. <laughs> well, yeah, what I am in happening? Landon's seat where he destroyed No, no, it. we fixed <laughs> We gave you a normal seat. We gave yes. the destroyed seat to, yeah, to Johnny. Yeah, it's not the destroyed seat. He tried to use the destroyed but seat. He he is using uh he's using the angles against you. He's scooched way up to the table, and you're back, providing depth as you should be. Uh, Listen, I am postulally correct these days. You yeah, look Landon, like George Mirashaw. Landon has the best George... posture for anyone that's six foot five that I've ever seen, mm-hmm. especially yeah. a poker player. The guy sits up perfectly straight at the poker table his his, tum- his tummy's tucked right into the ledge yeah <laughs> listen man after reading all the comments of my blower back pain he found out what the solution was and it was clearly it was clearly weak core yep. no posture yep. chiropractor I'm pretty sure bad it was, mentally it was weak glutes yeah those, weak those glutes. glutes are soft bro as fuck. i hip bridge 315 right. elevated no, i hip bridge more than you no you don't yes i do you don't is you that just the, say is that things. that exercise where I always see the girls laying on yeah, the back yeah. and like thrusting? Yeah, you just hump the air. Yeah, yeah. he's a, trying to he's trying to break a pelvis out there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, not my own. <laughs> Twenty three years of sexual frustration. He just takes it to the hip bridge. Mm-hmm. But I do want to shout out Conrad because when I first met Conrad, he was just a guy that you guys were working with as in terms of poker. He was dealing for the academy, and to see him step into the role of you know the the pretty much the host and the guy that's facilitating the action here on the number one podcast in poker right now. Mm, yeah, hey, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. Got to give him a shout out. We're yeah, trying. I, we're trying. I thought uh, I thought Conrad naturally suited this role. It's like when you have a drunk uncle and the ability <laughs> to put a camera on him all the time, you just should. Yeah, you know you, right. you don't steal that limelight away from Uncle Joe, it, it, Jersey Joe. Wow, if we can get Jersey Joe, Jersey I was actually Jenny. really excited to meet Melissa. Where's Melissa at? She's probably taking a shit, um, if I had to guess. <laughs> she okay. We got we got she, we got to keep it real. She is the star of the show. I mean, yeah, I'm no, we know, you. we know. We're well aware. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't want to podcast for a while. She wants to travel and play poker. Uh, 
Which what, is understandable. What a ridiculous yeah. endeavor. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. This is fun, us? but you know, traveling. And she just hasn't felt the pain yet. She'll come back. <laughs> so we're joined by everybody today. We're getting it popping. We got the Malaysian ankle biter. We got Landy. <laughs> we got Guapo in the building. And the Yins is always here. We're here. You know? We got an emote now. Mm-hmm. You guys do got a couple yeah, of Yinzer emotes. Nation. Terrible get the Yinzer, Yinzer Nation. Nation. Get those Forward. emotes going. Dude, Berkey's literally been spending his nights coming to the office to fucking put together emotes. He's like, all right, time to go make emotes. He's, that, he's our lighting and emotes <laughs> guy. That's who he is. I so, made the thumbnail. I don't know if you noticed the detail oh, on the thumbnail. No, but, I've been really impressed. I, I had no idea you were the lighting guy, too. What's going uh, on? Yeah, there? I, I, I'm, I'm Check a man all of, trades. I'm, I do it all. I, I even managed to get that little uh, little light highlight on your left side oh, on the wow. thumbnail, you know, just like the spotlight was actually hitting you. This is that little attention to detail. I'm taking a peek at these emotes now, and it looks like Melissa has her own. Yeah, yeah. Wow. She's, and then, so you have to be a, do you have to click the join button to get these emotes? You do. You do. You do. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Wow. Was it five bucks a month? Nice. He's better yeah. at this than you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Because when, when I do it, it's forced, and everyone knows it's forced. <laughs> That's kind of my thing. But when thing. he does it, it's just so natural. Lamanna's not a used car salesman. He's the used car salesman's manager. <laughs> <laughs> hey! What do we need? Push that fucking Prius. <laughs> yeah, Get well, it off the line. You, you heard, Johnny. Please and, like, yeah, subscribe. Please. Send us some love. Hit that fucking join button. Oh, it looks like Plato Poker just joined. I gotta give a shout out to him. That shout guy, out to Plato Poker. Poker. That guy has been supporting my content from day one. I really appreciate it. There's a, so many guys in poker that I, I, I don't wanna name them all right now, but there's the guys like uh, Plato Poker, there's the Nick from Yuma, like all these guys that are just always in these live streams supporting from the very beginning. And I paid attention and appreciate you guys going up. You guys so, appreciate you too. They definitely appreciate you, too. Yo, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, November 8th. You know what time it is. We're not S- talking about politics. Sir LaManna only uh, gets one, I get day one day a year. Listen, I, I do like politics. I, I'm not here to take any sides or anything well, like that. Before just, we get it, can you tell me what it is about politics that you like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's interesting. It's, it's, just, it's just a... You know, and this mean, is why you like the housewives as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is only I'm here for the drama. This man. is basically the housewives the once drama. removed. Oh, I mean, I just think you know everybody should go out and exercise their constitutional right. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jersey Joe hitting us with the super chat. Have you voted yet? I haven't. I I like to. Um, I mean, sometimes I vote early. Sometimes I've, I've voted by mail before, but mm. uh, I, I like to go on election day. Mm-hmm. You know, really it's like, yeah, the it's, it's the day yeah. you go, you know, you wait in line, you wait in does, line. It, does it remind you of the you WSOP some with the long lines? Like how long are the it, lines? I, I don't think it'll be very long. <laughs> Not on a midterm um, election cycle. Took me I don't 30 think. minutes this morning. 30 minutes? At 10. Yeah. yeah. Can so, we, you're allowed to vote. You. Can we drop them off in the mailbox though? Like we don't you can't. Have- yeah, yeah. You, you literally, uh, you literally can vote by mail, or you can, um, you could avoid. There was early voting as well. I, I have a, I've, I've always had this struggle with voting, um, not just for the presidential election. I think presidential election, I kind of just by default say, okay, I'll get a, get to be a part of the popularity contest, mm-hmm. but like the midterms and, and things of that nature. I don't know anything. Yeah, I mean, I guess I feel like an uneducated vote is a, is a, it's a war crime almost. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, I always felt that way too. Yeah, and and, and, and I'm way, not right. helping the cause because right. I at least recognize I'm uneducated. If you un- could do well, something well, about it, well, if you it. have if you have certain issues you care about, it doesn't take very long to uh, do a little research sure. on on the you know the candidates that are running and which ones support. Well, I guess what I'm saying, Brian, is isn't our system fucking broken? Oh, goddamn right it is. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's why they have the two-party system, mm-hmm. so that you can try to identify with one party or another. Problem is, is it feels like both the parties have gone so extreme that it's yeah. hard to be in the middle nowadays. I, I'm yeah. terrified to open this can of worms, yeah. but, I, <laughs> but, but, but identity politics is becoming like my number one pet peeve. It's, it's like the thing that, and I don't know if like I'm literally becoming an older curmudgeon, or if it's just gotten so amplified because of social media and that's just my general exposure to the outside world on a regular basis. But Jesus Christ, man. Like, would, there are so many people. I, I can't tell you how many times I've uttered the phrase in the last year where it's like, I'm on this person's side and I cannot argue for them mm-hmm. because they're so deep into their identity politics that it forces me as a person who's trying to be logical to just take the other side. 
Yeah. And just say like, look, like th this is getting to be ridiculous. Well, part of the problem is these conversations are happening on Twitter, right? Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> I, have you seen anything productive ever happen on Twitter no. or someone change their I, mind? I have. I mean, I have a little bit more faith in the in the bird app than it, most. I think it is. It is kind of strange because you have like, like you said, you know, the parties are becoming more extreme, but it. I still think there's a there's a, a, a giant group of people that that do fall kind of in the middle, even though it is divide. It's weird, right? Because it is very divided, right? You're going to see like everything's super close. There's so many uh, Senate races that are that are really close. I think uh, 538 gave it about a 55 45 chance for the Republicans to take over, um, which is not that close, but that's pretty big. But yeah, well, yeah, but um, it's it's probably going to be closer than. Yeah, I was it, I was listening to some stuff that they were basically saying but, that. Uh, these projections come with a wild margin of error. Yeah, and yeah. Like the the poll polling is way. becoming harder and harder. But like, I do think, I think that the uh, the, the the extremists on each side are also the loudest. Yeah. yeah right. So true. that you're you're hearing that more than than you are. Well, the, I, I think it's also just not like a straight divide, right? There are subsets to each side that have a very hardcore identity that they uh, adhere to mm -hmm. right so like um you know whether it's the the trumpians on the right or or like the flat earthers or the election was stolen like they all have these narratives that mm -hmm. they dive deeply into or like on the extreme left whenever you're looking at like extreme liberalism it's always just like one ism mm -hmm. that you're hearing from right like it's it's um it's the 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 extreme side of uh being liberal for cause a b c or d right and that just bleeds into everything else like that identity politic bleeds into everything else so it's like whenever they enter a conversation it's already tainted by by what what they so heavily identify with right. yeah right it's like person x comes into the conversation you're like oh for fuck's sakes here we go again like i'm just talking about the weather and i'm gonna get called a misogynist today for <laughs> you know saying the sky's blue instead of pink I, mm -hmm. I have a question. How, like, I know this is a question that we can't be asked, answered either, but, like, how much of society do you think I just votes off identity, uh, identity politics? Like, just what they identify with from, like, I think their a large family. I think a large portion. Like, I'm thinking, like, 60, 70%. It, like, it depends how you qualify. Like, if you, if you broaden it out to just Democrat or Republican, I would say the vast majority of people. Yeah, there's a lot. Like, if you're a Democrat, then you vote for Democrats, and if you're a Republican, you vote for Republicans. I mean, I guess. Right. Mm. But if you if you uh, if you uh, drill it down it, a little, a bit, little more. bit more, yeah, if you drill it down to like specific issues, I think it's far less. I think like far fewer people are just out there saying like I'm really passionate about being anti-war or I'm very passionate about the green movement, and they're voting specifically on those politics. Mm -hmm. I think it's more so like my party aligns closer with. Um, you know, yeah. uh, pro-choice or, or pro-rights, whatever the case may yeah, be, yeah. they vote that way. Yeah, because right. it's not it's not the it's not the bluebird app that's the issue, right? It's the people that take <laughs> the it's app. it's the people that take <laughs> conversations within the bluebird app, which are the issue, where you have a conversation in bad faith. Yeah, where you're looking for reasons to call someone something else and then cut the conversation. Which, for what it's worth, has been happening for eons. It's just you know one v one rather than being amplified to hundreds of thousands of people. Right, and then if you have a bigger platform, you just ratio people and get more engagement, and then... Did you know about ratioing? Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's... What I a feel, fun game. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Lambda got ratioed this morning. It is a game. No, so I didn't. I, I ratioed your ass. <laughs> Wait, wait, so you got double ratio? No, today? Shit. no. So Veronica ratioed you this morning. A ratio is when you take a stance on something and then you get dunked on. No, 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 no. absolutely it's when not. The, it's when the reply has more likes than the original. Post. Thank you very right. much, yes. Johnny. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you, you Johnny. And right. and the degree of ratio can be more extreme or. Mm -hmm. or but mine was yeah, more. If it's like I, ten I, to one. I out I out ratioed you by at least one. So I think the last I looked, my like I had like twenty six <laughs> likes. <on YouTube. laughs> <laughs> and you had 25, and that's the threshold. One over is enough. The you, have 20, you have 27 some now. Tweets are just, some tweets are not made to get likes. They are made to uh, basically alley-oop, not on yourself, but for engagement of others, right? I gave an engagement-seeking tweet, which now allowed you to get the engagement from said tweet, what, which what? allowed you to quote-unquote ratio me, which is actually all of my master <laughs> plan to get more engagements on my original what did tweet. You, what did you tweet last week where I just replied, fuck you, and ratioed the <laughs> shit out of you? That was great. Yes, well, okay. well that is actually the king of getting ratio so, now that so, I think about it. No, because he, he's right. He, he sets him up. I, like, I text him, I go, I go, ratioed, bitch. He goes, I was a layup. I set you up for that. <laughs> so the 
don't tweet, care. The tweet was, I never understood why when people people choose to engage negatively onto certain social media tweets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's that like, you can literally up. just not say something. And I knew that you were going to say, fuck you to that. <laughs> That's oh, right. I remember that tweet. That was a great one. Yeah, we blew it out of the park there. Oh, it was look, like 100 man, to 1. <laughs> we're a team. <laughs> this is a team. Twitter is a team sport. You're my Stockton, baby. <laughs> Twitter is a team sport. I'm actually dishing dimes, and you guys look at me like I'm the fucking idiot. I know what's going on. I'm I just, am the Bluebird app of poker Twitter. <laughs> I'm just the mailman. Send it home. <laughs> By the way, I thought we were going to have a new Twitter on Monday. What happened to that? Bro, I can't keep up with this Elon no, shit. Oh, who knows? Uh, uh, honest to God, like, I, I didn't even think the sale was, like, legit until suddenly the Twitter offices were being empty. <laughs> <laughs> Whole bunch of memes going around mm -hmm. everywhere. Honestly, I think we missed the boat. Like, we probably could have just done a week of content on, on like, Elon taking over Twitter. Mm -hmm. Like, I've can. been, yeah, because I've been watching it on, like, major uh, mainstream news. And there's like former employees coming on going, it's a hostile environment. You can't work there. Like it's all hands on deck. People are just leaving. It's a mass exodus. And Elon's just sitting there in his throne, like smoking a cigar like with cuz. Did you, see, did, you see, uh, did you see the guy that didn't actually work for Twitter, but had the last name Ligma? And then they, he walked out with someone? Yeah. Oh, no. my God. I, think, so I don't think he had the last name Ligo. I think they made it up. Right. Yeah. It was just, it like, was... a complete super meme of two people with, like, the last like last name, like, Ligma. I forget what the last, like, last one was. But anyways, leaving the Twitter offices. I think it was... Fuck, I don't know, but I think they were trying to say lick my dick or something. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Sure. So it's I, balls, I have a question right? for you guys. Oh, lick my balls, maybe. I have a question, a Twitter question for you guys. I want to know if I'm in the minority here, but... I would say over the last couple of years, when I start writing a tweet, the number of times that I actually don't tweet it or just delete it altogether is more than 70% oh, of the time. I wish I had that restraint. Really? <laughs> I, I, just uh, I, I, I desperately need somebody like on staff to Approve. give me a, yeah. like, I, I need the guy from Gladiator to just sit here like this. And then me give him the tweet and him just be like, no. You need a tortoise, tortoise approved. <laughs> no, was, you have no humor. I, was, I, I, <laughs> I have no humor. I got to run it by like, by I Landon. I have no humor. Yeah, so yeah, I'll I, be fucking tweeting dad jokes for like, you can run Jeremy Osmus's Twitter. It was like my, jo uh, like Ling, my Johnson. Like my Johnson. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Johnny, I agree with you there when it comes to the uh, amount of tweets that I've thought about tweeting and then didn't. But sometimes I just override that anyways and just click tweet. Yeah, Sometimes well, you usually, just kind of usually if it's a, if like I'm out and drinking and I read something, yeah, it's I don't like do that. it's like a snap decision. Yeah, and if my wife sees it, she she's in PR. She she's like you know she handles crisis and things like that. She'll just immediately just tell me to delete it. Can she help us? <laughs> the thing is, is it's never like an original tweet that I've been mulling over. It's a response to some no name. Yeah, it's always <laughs> always. And always. then when you go and click on their profile and you realize that they have zero followers yeah. or one followers. The, and, and that they've actually, actually been trolling you specifically for like a week and a half, <laughs> but you haven't been paying attention. And then you amplify their voice by yeah. responding to it. Yeah. 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 My I, tweets usually come from 4 to 9 a.m. and nobody's awake yet, so I can't run it by anybody. Yeah. Get... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm past the point of being callous enough not to respond to the alt accounts. Just yeah. based off of... Uh... But I think that that's what Elon is like trying to do. He's trying to make it so that it's more of a forum and less about like these troll accounts like people are verified so when you're responding to people mm. you're not responding to you know uh, uh you're actually responding to a real human being. i mean if, if the like everybody pushed back on the verification thing but if it's like legitimately done i don't mind paying the eight dollars like i think it's a great idea that everybody's using real names and just like you know poker software and everything else uh i think that there's no debate that the reddit upvote system is by far the best in like all of social media Go and on. I, I don't know well, it it basically rather than the algorithm, it dictates what's popular, mm. right? So the people discuss. Yes, uh, effectively, it's the entire Reddit community is um, is crowdsourcing what's popular, what's worth reading, what's not, uh, oh. and it's allowing like better information to rise to the top. So those with the most upvotes get seen the most. Yeah, Got like it. it goes viral, and you could do it in Twitter based off of likes, but you know you can like farm there. It, it's a lot different. Mm. Um, I'm not sure that it would apply to Twitter because I think the incentives of Reddit have always been abundantly clear and it was always kind of led by people who were a part of the conversation or lurkers that were reading the con and you know to some degree they kind of took that responsibility seriously now yeah. with social media it's like we're just out here buying shit for, for me Twitter is the 
application that I spend the most time on. And I'm not proud of this, but you know, I, I'm reading and, and spending way too much time scrolling. And at its current, the way that it's currently set up, it's not an enjoyable experience. I find myself, Agreed. I find myself reading into like negative threads and feeling worse about the world and wanting to respond to things that I, you know, that are, that I don't agree with. And I just wish that if, if Elon's going to tackle this babe, this animal and make it his baby, I, I hope that the goal is to make it a more enjoyable social media experience. Number one, but number two, I really need to cut back on my, my Twitter usage. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all, I think. I don't know, man. I, I think it is a very powerful tool. Like, I'm not surprised that he took interest in it. Um, but at the same token, I also think that it's a very dangerous tool. And it's one of those, it's one of those once in a generation uh, applications where I think that uh, this could be the technological version of what we saw with like, I, I don't want to compare it to the Nazi regime, but like, you know, where the ability <laughs> to amplify and mind yeah. control is so high that you can actually take a corner of the world and kind of get them to follow you, right? And we've seen it all throughout history through all the, all, all the empires that have been dominant, right? Like, generally speaking, they've done that through some level of communicative control that allowed people to become followers or worshipers and, and you know, take pride in it. It's like... <laughs> I worry. I, I I like Elon, uh, but I'm not so sure I trust him. Like he seems like he could be a diabolical genius, and I feel like we could be a part of like a cartoon where he's just sitting in a fucking lair somewhere. You know. I mean, as a Tesla owner, I wish that he would just focus on Tesla so that my car can drive itself and not crash into walls. Sure. And not focus on a communication app because I doubt that he's spending any time making sure that our Teslas are getting longer ranges or better for the environment or making sure that we don't crash into other cars. He spent zero time on that in the last two weeks. It's weird that we that we want him to do that. I don't even think he does that, does he at this point? No. Like he's right. definitely not. Like there's no no shot he's But been we doing all that view him while, as such though. a genius that we want him to solve those problems rather than the engineers at Tesla and the people you know what I mean? Like I think he just found people I don't know. I've I'm sorry, go No no go go shoot. I've had a very negative opinion about Elon for a bit now. Like, not that I know exactly if he's a genius or not. I think that um, his persona or whatever, his, his PR image is very good. And Tesla, for the most part, like their cars aren't amazing uh, in terms of like, um, I guess like, I know they have battery issues still. Uh, yeah. What their their total mileage? Uh, I mean, you could speak to this. Well, it's not yeah, just Tesla, right? It's it's the entire electric car market. It, it is. Yeah. But um, there's still much to be desired, yeah. and all of his forecasts are continuously just wrong. Mm -hmm. He always does these five to ten year forecasts that are just yeah. bad. If you look at the fud around him too, um, a lot of people call him like a scam artist, and I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't delved into it super hard, and I don't have like. A very compelling i feel like it's one of those things where it's like when you're worth a quarter billion or sorry not a quarter billion a quarter trillion uh you are very likely to have both been a scam artist and may and like not <clears throat> so basically the thing is is like it seems it, it seems inconceivable that somebody could get that rich without scamming at some point along the way but it also seems inconceivable that you could be that rich currently and still be scamming yeah yeah I, that's actually something my brother always talks about when you have that kind of money fuck you money there's no way that you didn't cut some corners along the for way sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure for sure absolutely no way and when i hear you talk about tesla it like kind of hurts a little bit like this is <laughs> like, i actually feel like this is my cult like i'm in a cult and and tesla is the cult that i'm in and it's it's weird my brother was telling me that he he was on the list to get a rivian suv and i was like why are you leaving our cult? How dare you? <laughs> it's How weird. Dare yeah, you, the the sir. mindset of it. I don't know. I just, it's fun to be far, part of something that definitely was revolutionary going from gasoline engines to an electric car when everybody said it couldn't be done. And to be on the forefront of that, you know, I was on the list to get my car and I was one of the first people to have a Model 3 delivered. So I, feel, I identify with like this movement of being on the forefront. I think if we do zoom out though, uh, it has been a, a, at least moderate success when Elon first delved into the electric car business, 
he was very clear that he wanted to leave everything open source and try to reshape the industry as a whole. He basically said the only way Tesla was going to succeed is if the electric car overtook the gas-powered car, right? And he just wanted to be the industry leader for that, but it, it was necessary for all companies to follow suit. Otherwise, uh, they were just going to be a niche company. That's starting to happen. Yeah, that's starting absolutely to starting to happen. You right. see literally mm -hmm. every single it, manufacturer rolling out an E-line. He's You're, such an interesting guy because it's just like, you would think like that, like the left would, would love a guy who's, who makes his number one issue, like climate change and wants to like revolutionize the car industry for the better. Um, but they dislike him because I guess, cause he's a billionaire, but then the right loves him where like, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's he's just like an interesting guy in that way where he's almost like flip flopped on like where, yeah, where he should, I would assume he's very admired. I would assume he's very liberal. Well, he, he, he actually, he actually he, tweeted, uh, he tweeted that he's traditionally voted with the Democratic yeah, Party yeah, he, and that this time around he's going to vote with the mm -hmm. Republican Party. Yeah, he, he did say that he thinks that um, he's just balance, engagement farming. Yeah, <laughs> for <laughs> sure. No, I mean, like he says that uh, he thinks a balance of power uh, in government is good. So if the Democrats are, you know, have the White House, then people should vote. Uh, for Republicans mm. going back to what you I'm sorry going yeah. back to what you said Berg most states are making it so it's mandatory for only electric vehicles by a certain uh, year they're mandating certain levels of carbon emissions by yeah. a certain year which, so it's not just gas it's, you like California by the year 2032 or something has to have 70 percent I'm just throwing out numbers but like 70 percent less carbon emissions yeah. and to do that they need x number of Electric, electric vehicles versus it, it's unlikely to ever at least in our lifetime to ever completely get rid of combustion engines mm -hmm. um if for no other reason than just because we are very slow to get in our of lifetime nostalgic things. I, I don't know about that completely you'll never see another gas car on the on that's the road that's crazy bro. i'm, uh, I'm, I'm right. gonna live to 130 years old yeah that's sure. what i Brian, assume yeah <laughs> think of it this way. i think in like what's, i think in like 30 years there, there won't be any like what's the probability, be very rare to have a gas what's car. the probability in 30 years that uh, i'll be alive probably pretty good no no, no like chevron is still alive uh, chevron yeah they have I mean, a lot of money now like, yeah that's yeah, like yeah, uh, uh, close yeah, to 100 percent. yeah and yeah. what's the probability that the, most of their money is still derived from their from gasoline yeah i, I don't know man i don't know <laughs> i know i'm not <laughs> i'm not saying right, like so. what's but right, what like, do you think it is it's like, high it's yeah, obviously yeah. high yeah I mean, we'll see yeah. they're just gonna lobby for it so it's just gonna be but around it's, for it's, a very it's long not time even, it's not even just about that right like the industry itself could shift we could see it move like 80 or 90 percent electric within our lifetime but you'll still have hobbyists you'll still have uh, a need for combustion, maybe not a need, but a desire for combustion mm -hmm. uh, that will be fulfilled, right? Like, mm. look how many people are still driving like classic cars now. And I understand that this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison because it's gas to gas, but uh, it's, it's a, a thing in our culture where we're nostalgic for the past. And we don't just get rid of stuff. No, I, 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 own a 19, I, I agree with that. No, I, I own a 1932 yeah. Ford uh, that's just sitting in a garage in Pittsburgh. You do? Yeah. What? It was my great granddad. Can so. we refurbish it? Has it been my it's, car? It's been refurbished once. No, you don't want that. <laughs> you would have to learn how to fucking drive a stick shift. Yeah, but like not even a like it's it's a three it's a three tree. So a like it's it's, it's it's one of those like real tall one. Uh, whatever. The driving was, experience is not what not nothing to be desired. I'm I was sure. just fucking around. Yeah. I do have to figure out how to drive though. It'd be like driving a go kart. <laughs> You should learn how to drive a stick, though. Yeah, I can going, drive a going, car. going back to your Chevron example, though, like if you look at Netflix when it first came out, they were trying to compete with Blockbuster with like movie rentals mm -hmm. or whatever. They don't mail DVDs in the mail anymore. They do. They still do. They still do. Yeah, but I mean that's not the, that's not the primary. But uh, right, but DV, DVD technology like, wasn't around for centuries. I, I it was around for that, I think a decade. Trying to say, like they're gonna they have to shift uh, shift their, yeah, their model in some evolved. way. Right, their business will evolve. Yes, they they, they very likely will be. Um, they, they will still exist and they'll still probably be very powerful. But I don't think they will be making the majority of their money because uh, they're. You know, they're sitting for gasoline sales to uh, automobiles. Yeah, I, I will yeah. say going back to Elon with having Twitter, I do have some faith that he's good at solving problems. I mean, when you look at the the rocket ships that they said would never be able to land, they they gave up on them and they're like mm -hmm. rocket ships can't go up and then land again. Somehow, I'm not going to say he figured it out, but he was facilitated figuring it out. So if he can figure out rocket ships landing back on the ground. I'm hoping that he can figure out a communication app. 
<laughs> oh, no. Listen, I we've talked know. about the Bluebird app and how much I'd pay for it. I love the Bluebird app. Uh, communication is way harder than fucking rocket science. <laughs> yeah, communication involves people. I also people. think so. That's, that, that's, that's that's been a, a, we've made way more strides in rocket science <laughs> than we have communicating as people. As, as we've seen sure. through the Blue Bird app of no one actually wanting to have a discussion in good faith. Yeah. yeah. Talk about seeing shit on the Blue Bird app. You guys like that? Yeah. You like that one? Yeah. 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 Really I got that for you. Oh, I man. got that for you. I, I just hear every time you try to transition into the next topic, Andre just going, this is fucking brutal. <laughs> listen, listen. At he some point, like, Texas when he's not here. I, I Conrad, said, stop it. Conrad, stop saying, yeah. speaking of blah, 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 blah. And then he, it's a non sequitur. No, right? no, no. You said stop saying shout out. Don't yeah. you lie no, to No, I people. said stop saying shout out. I think oh, you, yeah. Yeah. you get, you speaking, you, right? get, you get nine <laughs> shout outs in a row. <laughs> and one of them was a transition. Speaking of shout outs, shout out to... We haven't heard the segue yet. Maybe it's good. <laughs> Give him a chance, guys. Okay, talking about, instead of speaking of, talking about what? What the fuck is going on in crypto? Seems that um, Binance was bought by bad. Binance bought FTX this morning. What's uh, going well, on? Binance there? and FTX are both the two largest platforms, correct? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I believe Coinbase so. is up there. I think. Sure, right? I, yeah, that's true. Uh, I, I think the the only concern here is not that there's a merger, but that FTX was asking for help. No, of course. <laughs> yeah, that they have liquidity issues. This seems very, very concerning. This is like the Stars full tilt merger. So I don't. I don't really. I, w I was trying to follow it, but like I'm not sure. Exactly what was going on, uh, Andre. You might be able to speak better to this, but like, so uh, CZ and uh, and Sam Bankman. Let's free, just call them Binance. Well, yeah, Binance, <laughs> Binance and and FTX were feuding, right? For a while, is that what was going on? They were going and back then, and forth the last couple of days. Binance right? is an actual investor in FTX, and FTX, in my personal opinion, it's my favorite platform to trade on. Mm -hmm. It's Thanks. the most intuitive for traders. Yeah. It, the fees are right. relatively good. Not a paid ad. Uh, yeah, it's and. I think I actually have an affiliate link, but we're not going <laughs> to we'll put that in the description below. Just kidding. Just kidding. Paid out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, not financial it's always the, the platform I had used. I, I enjoy it more than Coinbase on all these other ones. I just felt like it was the most elegant and Binance was a direct competitor with them and had some financial interest in them. And apparently from what I've read on Twitter is mm -hmm. that um, Binance decided to liquidate a lot of their holdings in the the FTX the token, token right? yeah. which FTT. brought FTX yeah. to their knees mm -hmm. and had enforced them into some liquidity It issues. was a coup and uh, as a result <laughs> perhaps there was retribution for FTX uh, saying some things to regulators about Binance who knows but now Binance is now coming in to save the day which is why I responded to your tweet earlier that was barely a ratio that in 2011 full tilt poker was the site to play on especially for cash games like all the cash games were there it was the mm -hmm. the best site to play on and mm. um and then uh there were some issues obviously black friday happened and poker stars stepped in to a competitor stepped in to buy uh full tilt poker and save everyone with their deposits it kind of feels like that. So well, this is yeah. slightly it's different, though. Well, it might not be slightly different, but the timeline was different. Binance is swooping in immediately and already had financial interest in FTX, where Stars, it took them like two or three years to purchase Full Tilt. And it was cents on the dollar to like rescue Americans who had their money trapped on there. From what Johnny just said, though, it's basically a coup. Like he said that they, uh, Binance trashed the coin, basically. Yeah. That FTX was heavily invested in. And then came in and bought them. Uh, that's a speculation. And, and I'm just repeating what I've seen on, you got to, you got on to, yeah. Twitter. I mean, it sounds like similar to Full Tilt in the sense that they weren't very uh, critical with their funds, right? Yeah. If, yeah. You're, if you're like, the reason why Full Tilt collapsed when Black Friday hit wasn't because Black Friday. It was because of the run on the bank. Mm -hmm. Black Friday forced the run on the bank. And they were like, we don't have any of that money. <laughs> that you guys think we have <laughs> these are digits on a screen we've been paying ray batar 100 million a, uh, a month like it's gone guys mm -hmm. okay yeah, that's so crazy to think back to that time this is well before landon's time but when i was playing on full tilt i remember depositing through like western union to some guy in the philippines <laughs> <laughs> i used to do that for acr i think oh that's and, wild and like, and like that's that's how we bought in like and it was just normal i i like you go through the the buying in instructions and it's like go to western union 
and some guy's name that I can't pronounce is going to receive your money there. <laughs> and then once he does, you're going to have money in your account. Well, that was also a part of them uh, not having their liquidity segregated, if I recall. There was a an outfit from Australia that was uh, facilitating third-party uh, deposits and possibly withdrawals also uh, in order to uh, skate on the UGIA. Um, and something happened with that collective. I don't remember if they were working with the feds or if they kind of dined and dashed on full tilt and made off with a bunch of funds. But I do remember that there was like an issue with deposits and withdrawals around uh, this this particular company. Basically like full tilt was cutting all the corners and, and stars was like a true company. Right, like they were operating as above bar as possible, in spite of the fact they were still breaking the law, uh, as uh, according to the Wire Act. Yeah. yeah. What do you, What do you think? What's going on, Andre? What do you think? He, he's he's like the re resident crypto. No, he is not oh, a resident so crypto. Guy. I, I'm definitely not. So <laughs> I I have a good analogy here that I've seen that got a lot of traction that has looks like it's done pretty well to explain in layman's terms or in my terms, uh, five year old terms. Imagine McDonald's makes its own money. Let's call them clown bucks. Keeps most of it and then sells some to the market. McDonald's then uses their remaining <laughs> clown bucks as collateral for actual loans. And then people remember that clown bucks are not real. Then Starbucks comes in and market sells the clown bucks they were holding while reminding the market that clown bucks aren't really a thing. McDonald's balance sheet is now trashed with their clown bucks wiped out. Anyway, that's what happened in crypto land this week with the graph of FTX going from $22 to six. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's, wow. that's rough. Shout out to uh, Lynn Alden contact. For so the... would that be, uh, I don't, I don't do anything in the traditional market, but would that be similar? I'm asking you because you've traded before. Would that be similar to uh, FTX basically being a publicly traded company and one specific entity buying up a lot of shares and then doing a. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, it's because you could tank the stock by like say they bought up a third of the shares and then they just fast sold yeah. they, they could tank the stock that it's way. it's weird right? because uh the stock isn't isn't part of their oh it is a little part, part of their liquidity i just but always like, equate like traditional stocks and icos to to being not necessarily one-to-one -one synonymous but like as close of an analogy as possible when it comes to crypto land versus traditional markets but i'm not very sharp on this stuff i don't know I don't know what that answer is. I don't. I wouldn't say it is a stock, though. Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I only pose it that way because uh, obviously this doesn't really happen in traditional markets due to the SEC overseeing and like there's enough regulatory bodies where uh, a bad actor can't just swoop in and, and cripple a company. But we don't have that in crypto, right? <laughs> right? Well, at we least might, not yet. Yeah, yeah, right, right. They think that this this is another. Um, you know, thing that happened that's going to fast track the the regulation. This is crypto. alleged, though. Like I. There is FUD around if Binance actually did this, right? If CZ actually did this. That he did what? Apparently it's oh, not that, confirmed. That, that, that he, sold, yeah. that he, that he yeah. sold all the... Right. Like from the balance sheet With the intention of, of messing up their liquidity. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess it's hard to prove intent, but um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. There was a lot of stuff going on. Like this Up Only podcast in the crypto space with uh, Kobe and Ledger Status had like Martin Shkreli on today. Do mm -hmm. Kwan was on there today. Yeah. There was just like a, a group of, of people and... Yeah, there there were some memes going around. I thought, around I thought Del Kwan was in hiding. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, wow, he so. went on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! That's yeah, wild. I mean, this the guy that um, runs FTX. He's kind of like a uh, he, he's in crypto. A lot of a lot of people look up to him. Like he's just like genius guy, kind of mm -hmm. like an Elon guy. So it's crazy to see him fall from grace. Well, in two days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually saw a tweet from Mike McDonald this morning. I believe basically saying that. The reason for that is because he's never been to a bear market. So, like, he's never seen a bear market since he's been in crypto. That's most most of crypto. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like... That, that, I mean, there was there was a brief one. Oh, I shouldn't say brief. It was like six to eight months in 2018 mm -hmm. where uh, crypto had peaked at yeah. like 20K late 2017. I guess I shouldn't say bear market. I should say recession, right? So, like, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. So, right. so like crypto, is crypto came on the scene, like, right after the financial crisis Correct. of 2008. So there hasn't been an actual real recession that it's lived through. Well, so people are like, well, how is it going to react? How, how is crypto going to react to an actual recession? I didn't mean like an overall, tell. I didn't mean like overall recession. I just meant a bear market through right, crypto. Right, right, right. No, but there have been, there have been plenty of bear cycles. Not since, um, Luna. 
was alive? Well, no, 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 no. Not since uh, Solana, I believe. Since Sam got into crypto, I don't think he's ever been through a bear market. He, he's Solana, correct? He owns Solana? No. He's the one that created? No? I don't think so. Pretty sure. No. Sam Bakeman Free? I could have sworn it was. All right. Anyways. Maybe. <laughs> Unsubstantiated claims by, by Mr. Poppin over there. You know, some shit <laughs> he happens. might be right. I, I could have sworn it know. was. Yeah. I could have sworn it was, but, you know. Anyways. Yo, another thing I saw on the Bluebird app. Eh? Eh? Mm-hmm. Eh? Hey, was, you guys that like that? Better. That was better. Give uh, a what, do you, what do you think? That's All right. Andre's, so, okay. Andre's looks slightly unimpressed. There, there was no, a, that was better. There was an interview the other day um, that Nemo did for chess.com. Mm-hmm. That was quite interesting. Um, when you say interesting, you mean... Uh, incoherent? Yes. <laughs> I watch. watched it seven times and asked for <laughs> Landon to tell me what the fuck they were saying. I got it after one. Really? I yeah. still don't know what he says. Please run this shit. Yeah, run the interview. What's your approach for tomorrow? You are one day away from winning $200,000. Yeah, uh, the score one and a half <laughs> out of four. Uh, yeah, try to make as many draws. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I love that response, making, making some draws. It's obvious, huh? <laughs> Thank you very much, Wesley. Back to Danny. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know if he was All right, and back to you. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the, the way that the chess works is you get points for draws, and it seemed as if he was in a position that if he drew out, he would win the tournament. So he was just trying to make draws to win the tournament and hold a spot. That's basically the interview in 10 seconds. Yeah, when you explained it, I understood it, but it was, I, I didn't get that from him, obviously, and uh, neither did I. <laughs> and when the tweet is prefaced with "Wesley's so funny," I want, I want let in on the joke. Right, like I'm just an outsider here. I'm like, I want to laugh. Like, I thought he was tripping balls or something. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I, I wouldn't have gotten the joke anyway because I don't know chess. He sort of spoke like you type. Yeah, probably. Yeah. True. <laughs> uh, but like, yeah, even if I had understood what he said, like, I wouldn't have gotten the joke. I would have just been like, "Why is that funny? I don't get it. I don't. I don't know anything about chess." Has all the cheating stuff in chess brought more eyeballs to chess? Like, are people more interested in chess right now? I mean, they had a massive uptick, right? Because I mean, that's what's I'm going sure on with, that's what's going on with the poker stuff. I'm sure from like a if you use the Bluebird app as just the engagement seeker of these things, I would say yes. Just based off overall clicks, based off of YouTube as well, seeing the amount of views that certain chess channels would get has been slightly higher since all that stuff happened because people just love drama. Yeah. People love drama. So when there's drama, it brings the, call it low level engagement that people want to click on just to kind of have some sort of idea. So if someone comes up to them in a conversation and says, hey, do you know what's going on in chess? They have some sort of idea. And it's the same thing with poker where I've been asked by people that don't play <coughs> poker, have you heard about the Jack forehand? Yeah. Right. So it's, it's, I've been stopped everywhere. Like people that I didn't even know knew anything about poker. have been asking me about this hand. Like, yeah. like I'm just going to be able to tell them what's going on. <laughs> well, crazy. you can tell it to them like they're five, like really established high stakes poker pro assumes that he got cheated. That's it. <laughs> right. It no is, sentence. It is amazing how it all gets condensed to, cause I have people that approach me about this, that knew nothing about poker. And it's interesting to hear their narrative of what happened in that hand, because I've had all over the place where it's like, oh, this poker pro got salty and, you know, he, he took money from her to, uh, you know, she definitely cheated. Something doesn't sound right. My, my favorite response from the, the non-poker player is, that's probably something I would have done. <laughs> and I'm like, no, that's yeah. not something you would it's have like, done. Oh, okay. like, you're just going to play a $300,000 pot and then min-raise uh, Jack High and then call off a bet with Jack High because yeah. that's maybe, what you would do. Maybe if you had $10 in front of you, that <laughs> might be something I've you I've really, done. really struggled with the amount of people that say, you haven't played X game in a long time. Like, I see this shit all the time. It's like... <laughs> You don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Like anybody who watches that hand and it doesn't look like a foreign language to them is lying yeah. or just like legitimately knows absolutely nothing about poker themselves and would like to believe in like a fairy tale where they could do this with Jack High and be right. That's what makes poker so great at the same time too. Kind of. I right? mean, perhaps, perhaps it is true though when you're playing like one cent, two cent, in your kit in your living room with pennies like yeah yeah maybe right. that did happen mm-hmm. but there was 
real money on the line. There was homes that were being wagered. Yeah. That's not what happens when homes are being wagered. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a real difficult time just like buying into the narrative of like, had an oopsie, called off 100K with Jack High and happened to be right. Like, I don't know what happened. I don't know if there was anything nefarious going on or not. But what I'm certain of is that this was not like just a, I think I have the best hand. I'm going to fucking call. You guys see the uh, the lie detector place that she went to? Downtown? Yeah. You guys, you <laughs> yeah, yeah, familiar we talked that? about that. Are you yeah. familiar with this area? Uh, <laughs> I'm not. Bit. Please enlighten us. Yeah, enlighten us. It looks us. like an upstanding place. <laughs> I, I actually frequent downtown. There's a lot of restaurants that I go to down there. And this area is, it's like, they look like homes, but it's like, Bail you, bail, bail you out of jail. It's uh, immigration lawyer. It's tax accountant that I would definitely not trust as tax accountant for sure. <laughs> and it's, that's what it says on the sign is tax accountant <laughs> that you probably should not trust. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, uh, yeah, uh, polygraph. And yeah, it, it, but they all look like just regular homes. Yeah, okay. so, so, guys, so guys, the, guys, we got to stop. We can't talk about this. Jersey Joe is getting worked up in the chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Burke? Sorry. So the rumors floating around are that uh, this guy who who gave the polygraph test is like known for uh, coercing people into getting a positive test, and <laughs> allegedly uh, there's some speculation that the first test was actually failed, and that he like you know basically coached her up and said like we'll get you that Look, so what you should have asked me was right. <laughs> there's already dissonance because uh, one of the questions was did you collude at all or something like that and she's like no and then and she, she goes passed? on the pod yeah she passed she openly said her and rip were colluding. and then yeah and then she goes on the mm -hmm. pod directly after that and says oh yeah yeah, yeah. i colluded with with uh or i soft played soft played right with, which is technically well, colluding if, right. if you don't know the difference of terms would that come up like would that that right. wouldn't register that's true if you don't know the difference of terms that wouldn't register i will say like that, that is true right because if you, you just say i soft played and like that's collusion you're like what yeah yeah like it, would, it wouldn't register to you mm -hmm. so it would never pick up on a lie detector right. test but um that's well good. no one knows anything about these things the yeah. the legitimacy of polygraphs are already of course that's why they're low. not admissible in court right because they just they're just it's like there's already a big margin of error and then it only expands further as far as like manipulation goes whenever it comes to the person administering the test the right. questions that are being asked yeah. uh i think that there were only three questions and she had brought them herself it's, it seems so like, like a rehearsed. lie detector test is just kind of like a pr stunt yeah yeah i mean if you do it there it's like my cousin tito is giving it to you i don't know what's going on <laughs> or it's there. the uh tax account that's not actually a tax accountant or or, or the bail bondsman <laughs> speaking of hustler casino <laughs> yes yeah, nice. boy <laughs> Did you guys see this hand with Eric Person and uh, the Queens? Yeah, the and Dr. Batman Queens and Doctor Mr. Doctor Batman. That was wild. Where, okay, how do you come up with Mr. Doctor Batman? I think that's his name. If 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 you guys <laughs> haven't that's seen, his name. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen it, our, our boy Guapo is gonna run that for you in a have minute. You, have you guys talked about this? Nope, time? we haven't actually. We left it on the back burner, but since we brought this up. I'm, I'm less interested in the hand and more in the banter that happened after the hand. Yeah, we're going to start it at the end of the end of the hand. I mean, the hand is weird. <laughs> the hand is, I don't know what to say about the hand, weird. honestly. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I the, mean, I, I, the hand, I feel like persons wanted to look good, had him dump all his chips and they gave him a refund back. afterwards. <laughs> He's like, I'll give you 10k. Just yeah, fucking dump like, it. Yeah, <laughs> fucking go off when I have a full house. I need the content. Like, I don't know what the fuck was going on. Bro, you have queens on an A-side board. How the how are we getting in 3,000 big blinds? Yeah. You're right. A house? Yeah. <laughs> so, go up, I'll roll this clip. Let's see. It. There should be an insta fold. I don't know what you're beating. Jack Nine got there. 10 was already there. Hearts got there, obviously. Something tells me he wants to call. And no, I don't know. I'm just, it's just, 
And wow. All in and a call. Give it. Here you go. Here's another tilt card. I'll take it all. Thank you, sir. So good to play with you. I'm just needling. Isn't that fun? Isn't that the point to needle? You're not wrong. I mean, that's what he wants to do, right? He wants to needle. I didn't bring this to the game. He did. But now all his chips are mine. Right at the end of the fucking stream. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. Mr. Batman. Good sportsmanship, bro. Good sportsmanship. Oh, I don't have good sportsmanship. Uh, I'm here for all of you. All right, so... I, I personally... You think doing people's good sportsmanship when you fucking get stacked so, with double A? I, I get it that he's... He's... And in this case, it's a little bit unique because Mr. Dr. Batman was giving out bad beat cards. He was dishing out poor sportsmanship. Is that poor sportsmanship or is that fun in nature? I like, think... It, I okay, think, imagine losing a gigapot and then getting a card like that. Yeah, but everybody, like... But be you. Just me? Be, per, be per, you. Personally, I wouldn't give a fuck. I would take the card and I would laugh. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, whatever. That's his slick that he came up with and whatever. But, like... I don't you're know you're it, a more evolved human being than a lot of other people. My, my point is, is that <laughs> my point is is that if you're gonna be giving poor sportsmanship cards out, tilt cards, needle cards, and that's gonna happen to you where you implode and, and get stacked, and Eric Persons is gonna now redish it out. Yeah. That's one of the few scenarios where I'm actually okay with the poor sportsmanship. The anti-hero right. on the with the Gatorade logo kind of just puts it all together. Of like, you don't really want to root for it, but you don't want to root against it either. So like his the cards stick, whatever. It's like a cute little joke, you know? Like yeah, you lose bot, well, whatever, you get a card. But like the way persons came at it was kind of heavy, little you, heavy. You, you, look, you can't, you can't. I mean, uh, I wouldn't care. But. You can't fault persons because Mr. Doctor Batman's shtick is weak. <laughs> you know, it, like the intent behind it is the intent. He just stinks at the execution. Yeah, maybe. Persons, he kind of nailed the execution here. <laughs> you know, As a matter of fact, he might have been the executioner he made, in he, this particular he, he instance. He definitely makes you the executioner. It. That was for sure. He how did he get shoved on? I on don't the end? know. Well, <laughs> it probably cost him ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> telling you, like a wink and a pat. Like, go ahead, rip it in, man. I'll give it back. I promise. It's so the only wild. thing that makes sense. What the fuck is going on in this hand? It, I, I, I'm curious. I want to get Berkey's perspective on this because you're a long tenured pro. Do you remember the biggest like outburst in celebration? Or, <laughs> we or, just heard about this. Or needle that you've ever had towards someone? And like, do you do that? I, I can't picture you doing that. I do it to Lynn all the time. Oh, okay. uh, we, have, I, I, we have very enjoyable banter. And I, I know her well enough to know <laughs> when she's like in a position to take it versus not. Like, I'm not going to step on her throat if I know that that pot truly hurt. Maybe after an orbit or two, uh, you know, but... Um, no, I don't know. Like uh, a lot of the private games, they are good because some of this behavior is accepted. But I talked to Melissa a lot about this. Like we were talking about policing uh, bad behavior at the table whenever uh, a, a guy is like particularly obnoxious towards a woman, whether he's like just over the top flirty or, uh, you know, kind of targeting in, in a disrespectful way. I've always said that the best way to to quell that is to be the person at the table who's capable of taking the spotlight off of the woman, right? And deflect. Yeah, and yeah. the easiest way to do that is to either uh, deflect all the attention onto you where you become a target or deflect the attention back onto the aggressor where he now becomes the target of the table. Yeah. And generally that's going to be through some sort of banter, right? Uh, there's actions you can take as well, like whether it's slow rolling or uh, you know, may maybe like a, a sharper tone here or there, but like in general, if you're good at banter, you can control a lot in the environment. And I think it does add a lot to the game as a whole, not just from a bottom line perspective, right? But uh, indirectly, it's going to impact your bottom line in a positive way because you're going to create a more jovial environment, even if it's coming with like some, some sharp needles. Um, every game that I've ever played in that's good this kind of stuff is on the table, but not the way that they're doing it, right? Like Dr. Batman shtick is tired. It, it's, it's so weak and it's not funny. Uh, I get it. I, yeah, I understand. It's, it's, it's a show. It's whatever. It's yeah, like, it's a show. He's trying to play it up, whatever. Yeah. But like, it, it's, it's corny as fuck. It of would just like, it never fly. It wouldn't even fly with like, you know, the old timey 
60 year old billionaire Rex. Like nah, even they would be like, up. yeah, even they look at this and be like, this is dumb, right? He's got to expect, expect it for like people to come back at him. Right? Yeah. He but then like that, Eric is right? just like, he's just way, way, way too over the he's top. Way he's way over the top. It seems malicious. He's way like, over the top. But you, you would think that like, if you do this, that, you know, somebody else is going to try to one up you or they're going to try to go over the top well, because of that. I say right? it's over the top because it's not sharp. It's not like quick-witted banter. It's just a lot it's just of fuck aggressiveness. you. Aggressiveness. Yeah, it's yeah, just like yeah. a lot of like flexing and fuck mm -hmm. you and like uh, that's very off-putting to the people who are watching. I think. Yeah. What, yeah, what are your agree. thoughts in tournaments when you know guys are running deep and it's a big all-in moment? Bro, <laughs> tournaments are a different fucking beast, man. Like 100%. I can lose a million-dollar pot and have Roger Sipple take a picture of my sad <laughs> face and be fine with it. Know that I'm gonna get to keep playing with them and everything's gonna be right in the world. You bust me with fucking 21 left and ask me to take a picture, I might cry. <laughs> Like, so it's regularly. so emotional. It, it really yeah. is. This is a regular occurrence Emotional for you. damage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this yeah. has actually been one of the issues that I've always had with Phil Helmuth and why I've come at him online is because I felt like he had such poor sportsmanship and big tournament moments, and I felt like he was setting a bad example. He's for also players. so awful at taking it. Yeah. He embarrassed himself at that 5K final table this summer. Like, he played like an amateur he devoured this roast beef and like he was the butt of was every bite he was the butt of every joke and he was so soft about it right like the david he, johnson one right uh, david jackson, jackson. david jackson, jackson. Yeah, 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 jackson. yeah 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 that, he, like, that was a clinic that yeah, was like, so fun to watch absolutely oh the perfect God. way of, of saying it like david put on a fucking clinic mm -hmm. and helmuth just kept redirecting it in a way to like pad his ego and deflecting, uh, you know, more ire onto the to the collective, and it's just like <laughs> oh, everybody watching realizes that you are just absolutely getting outclassed right now. I remember there was a hand in that tournament where uh, Helmuth open folds like top pair, and did it, like then three times <laughs> at the final table. David Jackson just shows him the four over high. the fucking bluff. It was like king queen or something. It was right here. It was, yeah, there yeah. was a different hand too, but we can use this one for example as well, where he just open folds, and uh, when you open fold a hand that good. You don't have to say anything, but just know that you kind of got clowned on. Yeah. Right. He didn't even yeah. bet. Like, he only bet like 75% pot, I think. Like, he didn't bet. It doesn't matter how much you bet. I yeah. mean, it, it, it happened multiple times. Uh, he might have, he might have overbet this one. I don't remember. But yeah, like, he just double barreled a couple of times with like gut shots. Pot. And Helmy's just like pot. mucks face up with top pair. Like, top pair, good kicker, too. Like, this is why I'm the best. He's like, well... <laughs> uh, shout out to David Jackson, actually. I played with him this past weekend in the MSPT. Yeah, he chopped it. He chopped yeah. it, yeah. Nice. I played with him for quite a while, and he is a good player. He, he, he has great timing. He, he's just... He bet pot. Yeah, he's, he's good. How'd you do? Uh, I got 49th. 49th. You, yeah. and your, you and your brother both made, like, a deep, deep run. Yeah, that was fun, actually. We both have uh, cash game backgrounds, so... The fact that we're playing in the same tournament together and advancing to day two, it was it was so fun, and it's something that I can't wait to happen again. And I'm actually going to be focusing more on tournaments, <laughs> and he's playing more tournaments. And <laughs> You're making the shift to the dark That's side. Right. Welcome, welcome to the welcome tournament to the streets. Dark yes. side. Welcome. It, it reminds me of what it felt like when I first got into poker. You know, that excitement of... Yes winning and advancing to the next day there's no excitement in cash games it's just a grind oh, just a grind and grind especially grind, being yeah. there with my brother something the that glory. we both share yeah, together exactly and, you know after the t the day is over we go have dinner we talk about hands yeah but with like the excitement comes the the down in the dumps and, oh, and, yeah. and landon was there when i when i dusted it mm -hmm. uh when i lost my 30 oh. big blinds in one hand oh, yeah. you, you put this in on twitter right yeah what was this I mean, it wasn't a terribly interesting hand. Um, yeah. I, I four bet jammed button versus small blind scenario. I was on the button with ace nine off suit, and the player in the small blind, I can't, Jessica Jess Veerling, 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 I think, made the call with ace ten suited, which is by all means standard on my part, standard on her part. But I, what I was impressed with is that a lot of people don't actually make this call in her seat with ace ten suited. Mm -hmm. They prefer to like fold and go on to the next hand and not risk such a large percentage yeah. of their chips out. So I, I just wanted to give her credit on Twitter and I said, shout out to Jessica for making a gangster call. You know, yeah. it, it, while it's the correct call, it's not one that's easy to make. Yeah, it's a pretty, sure. cause it's, it's one of those spots, especially if you know that your opponent is jamming correctly or close enough to it, where if you start three bet folding a hand that good, 
where you take your action and then aren't sure how to prepare facing four bet jam. Folding is losing so much in comparison of the amount of chips that you put in that you cannot get back anymore. Right after putting in the three bet is X amount of big blinds. And then once you fold yeah. facing four bet, you lose everything that you've invested versus calling, even though it feels. I don't know, man. Back in my tough. day, that was called sunken cost fallacy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're just getting it shown that ace king ball every single time. You know, you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. No. I, and I, re I talked to Landon at the, at the payout. And it's just funny how tournaments are. It's like, I'm just second guessing, like, oh, I just, I did this against the wrong person. And oh, we want now, control so bad. Now I'm like looking at the chart to make sure that it was okay. It's max coping time. And then I'm looking to make sure that her call was okay. And I'm like, it's all good. And I'm just like, I still want to be in the tournament though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give me my seat back. Right. Jamin busted me from a free roll the other day. <laughs> And I knew he made a bad call, and I immediately texted him. I go, that's not a fucking call. <laughs> Shout out to Jamin. Well, if, he's, if you're jamming too wide, then He goes, I'm making... I'm make, I, I, I jam perfectly. Yep, you play perfectly. <laughs> no one plays more perfect poker than no, Matthew I Berkey. jammed according to the goddamn chart. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm making pork chops, man. What do you want from me? Like, Fold your fucking hands. Uh, like shout out to pork chops. Sounds like you want some pork chops. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'll take some pork chops. Yeah, where's our want. meal, Jamin? What the hell? I'm not where's gonna, gonna travel around to play poker, though. I mean, Vegas has... A plethora of tournaments that we get to play and i i live you guys like my big word usage i'm shout out to Matt nice. Murphy over yes. here. a cornucopia <laughs> cornucopia of vocabulary if you will mm -hmm. yeah so no. <laughs> but like yeah traveling to all these places florida all these other places that have great tournaments texas oh you guys are giving me some b-roll over here yeah so mm -hmm. i was actually about to ask you about that recently it seemed like you rented a van and was going up and down the coast yeah i'm gonna drop that video tomorrow actually oh shit how was that that was one of my favorite shots right there of olga that's your audience's favorite shot too <laughs> <laughs> it's funny uh whenever i post olga in any of my videos the comments are just like more olga please yeah <laughs> now you know how we feel with melissa yeah mm -hmm. um, can't feature actually, her enough i actually have a um a filter on my YouTube comments. And if anybody says the word Olga, it automatically gets hidden mm. so that I can approve it because yeah. I don't want anybody, some, yeah. you know, talking. Yeah, we have shit. that with, we have that with Conrad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I 90, only approve the let's get it popping. 99.9%. I'm going back. I don't even think there's ever been a negative comment about Olga on my channel. So I always just approve them. She's obviously the star of the show. I really need to get her more involved in my yeah. content. Are you, are you still on the content grind? I have not been on the content grind. It's just one of those things where I did it because it was fun. So I've been making content for five years. And out of those five years, I have 110 videos that I've uploaded. And so if you do the math, that's like a video every two and a half weeks or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it started to just become a grind and not be fun anymore. And, um, you know, I, I still identify as a poker player first and wanted to make sure that I'm working on that part of who I am. But as I've kind of progressed and I'll tell you the truth, like you're really, I'm personally influenced by the people around me. And since I've become friends with Rampage and Mariano, they've reignited my competitive nature with creating content. You know, I see what, I see what Rampage has done with content and I see him like playing on these live streams. I see him playing tournaments, getting bracelets, rings and, it, because he's a friend of mine, I'm like, I want to do that too. So yeah. like now I'm playing on Hustle Livestream, starting to play more tournaments now. Obviously, my brother has a big impact on that as well, doing so well with his tournaments. He's and been killing it, it. It creates this like competitive thing inside of me as well. So yeah, I think uh, going forwards, what I want to do is I want to focus more on tournaments and I want to create more content. Do you feel like that you need to have a purpose for your platform now that you've developed one? Yeah, uh, that's the thing is that I do feel indebted to the people that watch my, my content because they've been around for so long. Shout out to the Vibe Squad. I know you guys are watching right now. Fonzi, uh, Play-Doh Poker, who we mentioned before. Joey, uh, so many guys in there. Um, Wild Bill, I, I know you guys are gonna be upset if I don't mention your name right now. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for following since the beginning. And because they have been such a big part of who I am now and the growth to even allow me to be on Hustler Livestream. Like, <clears throat> even with like the content I have now and the platform that I have now, the followers that I have on Twitter, the uh, engagement that I get when I upload an Instagram reel, Ryan's only gonna let me on Hustler Livestream once a month. 
Yeah. You know, so, and I wouldn't get that once a month if I didn't have the content. So yeah. I'm, I'm hugely indebted to that. So yeah, I do feel a sense of responsibility to help my community and to provide value. And to be honest, like I'm not the most entertaining person, you know, you're not going to tune into my channel because I'm cracking jokes like DePaulo or I'm providing some high entertainment value. Somebody on Twitter, shout out to whoever said that they use me to fall asleep. That's, <laughs> <laughs> and that's great, you know, like that's actually, uh, that I feel good that my voice is soothing enough for you to fall asleep to. But yeah, I, I think where my value is going to be is for the, the lower stakes audience where I can, you know, talk to them about how I play hands. Talk to them about how uh, I've developed my mindset. Some of the hacks that I've used to have longevity within the poker industry. Do you think that you might have hit a burnout of content of some sorts at oh, yeah. some point in your career and like I guess talk about that and extrapolate when or how you felt during 100 <laughs> percent there came a realization where I realized that if I just uploaded hands and talked about the big pots that I played and and showed like the chip stacks that I could amass a big audience like I could upload twice a week show only hands and I could have hundreds of thousands of subscribers so it came a balance of do I do this and burn out or do I chase the thing that's creatively inspiring me? The B-roll that you guys saw on the screen, the, the stories that I get to tell so that later on I can go back with Olga and our future children and say, look at this time that we went on this van road trip and the places that we went and the struggles that we had. You know, Olga and I did a podcast together where we talked about some of the struggles that we had had. So yeah, those are the things that I'm gonna go back later on and, and watch. I'm not gonna go back and watch how I played pocket jacks in a two five game when I was you know, 10 years deep in my career. So some of it's for the audience and some of it's definitely for myself. So what's the, what's the motivating per I know you talked about responsibility to your audience, but first and foremost, you have a responsibility to yourself. And this is something that, you know, as a content creator myself, I kind of recognize uh, everything is done with a purpose. I, I don't know about you, yeah. but I'm, I'm thrown a, uh, an idea every day yeah right and some of them are like good they would get traction like uh somebody in our discord hit me up and said like you guys should um just all go play like the orleans 160 daily and record it and like title it like berkey's broke or something like that it's like yeah that would probably do okay but i replied and i said like here's our most popular video ever and it was like 150,000 views it was day one of the robbie robbie j lude thing right and i show them the monetization and we made 835 dollars I was like, for us to pivot into a one-off idea that's going to require like a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of editing, or other other outside resources, the juice has to be worth the squeeze. And like, mm -hmm. though this idea may actually have some traction, it doesn't align with anything that is my purpose at the moment. So like, yeah. what what's your purpose to continually create content yeah. uh, if that's if not question. monetary? That, that's a great question because. I your passion for something can only take you so far before you burn out when you're not making money at it. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons why I've slowed down so much on the, on the content. And I've talked to Olga about it and I'm like, I do love making content, but I need to make money. You know, like yeah. that has to be like, we're going to have a family. We, I can't just be doing things for, for fun. Right. Like, like if you love the program, uh, you, that that's great, but you better be making like a hundred or two hundred an hour. You're not going to do it for twenty bucks. <laughs> exactly. You know. And uh, I've actually noticed that the monetization has been picking up more so recently. Uh, when I upload a video, it still gets fifty thousand views or so. So my audience has stuck with me. Thank you for that. With my inconsistent uploading, but yeah, I, I want to create a life for for my for my wife and my future children. So I've been incorporating things like uh, affiliates stuff you know like now uh and and this is a the thing that i made a promise to myself a long time ago i'm only going to sell something on my channel if i personally use it and if i think that it has value for my audience yeah. so i have a poker channel i have affiliated for software y academy because i i went to the academy i i enjoyed my experience i thought that having access to berkey chin all the guys here hunt uh, to talk about tournaments over a weekend was very valuable to my audience. So I said, hey, you guys should sign up for this. Poker yeah. Out Loud. I participated in it. Sign up for that. Um, so, you know, and, and I get a little bit of money if they do sign up for that. So I personally use Range Converter. I busted out this tournament. 
I was in, immediately on range converter, making sure that my Ace-9 off was, was a jam and seeing if her Ace-10 suited was a call. <laughs> did range converter have uh, ICM involved? No, no, it did, no, it did not. But here's the thing is that we're, there's 50 players left in this tournament. I actually don't give a fuck about ICM at this ICM point. ICM is for poor people, yeah. <laughs> uh, when we get down to the final table, sure, I'm going to like pay a little bit more attention to ICM. Sure. But I want to win. You know, yeah. I, I want to put myself in the best situation yeah, yeah. to win. So if I talk about range converter and I have value for it, it's valuable for me. I'm going to pass it on to my audience and say, hey, I think this is going to be great for you guys. Yeah. The, where the tough things have come in is like things like Manscaped have reached out. I'm like, I actually don't even use Manscaped. Mm -hmm. I did buy it recently. <laughs> just to, just to see. Like, Let me see. Maybe yeah. I like this. And then if I, I like it, it, I can. Yeah. I can uh, and it, yeah, actually, I three of them. And it actually worked well. So I would be open to, to <laughs> so that. Yeah. Right. But the point is, is yeah, I, if I'm going to make content going forwards, I definitely have to have some bigger vision on how this is going to impact my family mm -hmm. how, while creating value for my audience. The thing that really turns me off is things like Drake doing steak.com. Mm -hmm. where he's getting paid to gamble yeah like i think that is so disgusting because he's signing people up for something that is ruining a lot of people's lives at least when we sign people up for poker when you talk about ignition yeah yeah uh that, that the, my mistake it's gone when yeah. you talk about uh bet mgm people if they apply themselves and they work hard and they sign up for software y academy and subscribe to range converter code vibes <laughs> <laughs> very, very nice at least they can put themselves in a position to beat the games. We're, we're helping them overcome what the limitations are, what the struggles are to becoming a winning player. What, what Drake was doing and some of these other influencers were doing was really bothering me. And it's something that I, I feel like I could never cross over to that line. I, I, th I, think, it's worth, I think it's worth further qualifying that because uh, as, as an outside listener, I think that you could draw a parallel to what Jake, Drake is doing for stake.com and like what we do for online operators. But I think uh, to double down on kind of what you're saying, the big difference is that there is no barrier of entry to playing online slots and they are absolutely taking your money. Like it's the house, right? Like it, the house is just siphoning your funds and all it is is a deposit and then click a button to spin a wheel, right? With poker, the reason why I don't have uh, much of a guilty conscience in steering people to sites that I believe in is because there's a there's a huge barrier to even getting your first hand dealt. You have to have some interest. You have to understand how the game works. You need to know the rules at a bare minimum, right? You need to be able to finance your account. And then you need to be able to get yourself comfortable enough to sit down at a table to actually gamble, right? So it's, it's not mindless. I think the difference between, uh, and I, I'm just kind of further illuminating what you're saying, but the difference between being mindless and mindful whenever you're actually gambling, even if you're just gambling, right? Like we're definitely promoting these sites to negative EV players. They're losing for sure. But to your point, they have to jump through a bunch of hoops in order to lose. And they should be conscious of the fact that, uh, you know, they're outmatched whenever they're at the table, or at least they have the ability to be conscious of that fact, right? People who are losing at slots have no fucking idea. They're just sucked into the blue zone and they're just clicking away. And on that note, download WPT Global today for your chance to win in your way into the win WPT Championship at the win this December. I, yeah. I actually really want to play on WPT Global. Um, I have a residency in Mexico now. I, I or This is actually something that's happened since we last talked. I, I really value experiences and I blew through a lot of money having these experiences. And I, I, I told myself, if I ever get a hold of money again, I'm going <laughs> to invest and, and not be so dumb with it. So one of the things that I did is I diversified. Save. Bought crypto peak. I, and you I did. <laughs> I, actually, I actually sold a lot of crypto at the peak and I sold my board ape at near the peak. Me too. And I converted to USDC. I made like almost half a million dollars doing this. And nice. I just Subtle immediately flex. rolled it into a Cabo Airbnb. Nice. And now this Cabo Airbnb is not only allowing me to play on GG Poker. For some reason, I can't play on WPT Global yet. Next week or the week following, they're going to launch in Mexico. Okay. Um, and I, on my online tournaments, I've been on WCP.com and I can't track my hands. And the best way to get better at poker is to put your hands in a database, analyze how you're playing all of your hands. And I'm actually excited to be able to go to Mexico now and play on GG, play on WPT Global, perhaps log them in a database. I don't know if I, I think I can do that. Yeah. The Cabo place looks really, really sick. 
Yeah, yeah. and also it's like, you know, helping me pay for my, you know, life. It's also life. fucking winter helping, here now. Helping, yeah. you, <laughs> helping you pay for the copious amounts of buy-ins mm -hmm. that are coming to these live MTTs that are... Mount yeah. Charleston got like four inches of snow today. Did it? That, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Do you, just real quick, when it comes to the content perspective of making things for you, as well as knowing what definitely would work from an algorithmic standpoint, do you think that there is an in-between or maybe having like a two-channel system of having your one channel of all of your creative content and ideas and then the other one kind of churning out the mass volume that can be done if you sort of get all the B-roll and the footage correctly, spend some hours doing it and then hire someone else to edit and outsource? Yeah, it's something that I've thought about a lot and I am very hands-on with my content and I have trouble delegating. I have trouble actually giving up any part of the process for me creating a video. Mm -hmm. And I think I've kind of reached the, the burnout point of creating content for just fun. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about having two channels where I get to have my fun channel, I'm probably not there. I'm probably not never going to do that. Right. Just because it's too time consuming for all the things that I have going on in my life. Makes um, sense. But yeah, so if I'm going to upload content, it's going to have value for the viewer. And there's going to be, it's going to make me money somehow. Yeah. And it's also just going to provide you with enjoyment and love of the process that you're doing where yeah. you actually feel like the content that you're putting out is not just worth it for your audience, but worth it for you as a person. Totally. Nice. Yeah. I, I had a podcast with Jamin Burton re recently and I really liked our dynamic. So uh, did we. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Jamin Burton. He's one of my... Uh, favorite people in poker. I got a Jamin uh, emote in there now. Wow. Oh, no. wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Jamin got an emote. He got, Jamie, Jamie got, got any pork chops from no, he that. Got, he, he, got his, he got his very own emote. It came from our WPT Global uh, group chat yesterday. Uh, if you guys, yeah, there it is. There go ahead, is. Th go throw the Jamins up in the chat. <laughs> Jamins in the chat. Go ahead, throw the Jamins up in the chat. Can we get a cat, is there a cat Jamin there? Uh, not yet. Well, we're gonna catch uh, we need to get 90 more members before I can get a cat jam. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if cat jam works as a non gif Yeah, it does. You just it's just a cat. cat. Yeah, you just put the fucking cat in. Well, we have, we have by default cat emojis. No, that's not the same. I mean, it's just a cat. No, it's not the same and you know it. I mean, you're like a graphics person nowadays. You can probably get that's something true. together. You know, a graphic, like a cat with a fucking star I'm a, or something. Look, I'm gonna work on it. You know, I'm gonna yeah. talk to my people. Yeah, we yeah. might be able to get like I a gif your people. emote. <laughs> Get the fucking email in the chat. Go, go your side. Go your, go side. your side. You were talking about Jamin. Yeah, I think I think it's really important to have friends like Jamin because not only is he just a great person, but he is someone when I'm around him. After we hang out, I'm like, damn, I want to make some more content. Like he, he kind of refuels me on. Yeah. We talk ideas. I, I he shows me some of the things that he's been working on, and I'm like, now I'm re-energized. Same thing I was talking about with Rampage earlier. Same thing I'm talking about with my brother being a tournament mm -hmm. beast. Like I, I would not be interested in tournaments if it wasn't for Andrew just ripping yeah. off all these. Yeah. And, I had this and, uh, and Rampage having all the success. You know, I had this conversation with Brandon uh, post podcast, where those people in your life, uh, we we'd call them enhancers, where no matter what you're doing or the conversations that you're having, just being around them and having the person that can help you increase your own sort of well being just by them being there is a valuable thing to do for someone that that's andre to me except the problem is uh, he he gasses me up for an idea that i think he's going to help me with <laughs> and then he gives you the reins yeah and then he's just like you should definitely do that i'm like yo i'm thinking about starting the seven person podcast like this is what it entails yada 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 he goes oh that is a fantastic he idea goes, day three he's like I can't do this anymore, he guys. Goes, I, 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 I love that for you. He literally yeah. left the group chat. He's like, I'm out. <laughs> I cannot do I this can't anymore. Take it you know, anymore. We, we got Guapo out of it. So it's true. So it's, true. It's, it's, it's a positive. Guapo. Originally, you were the one manning the cameras and things like that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. He, uh, he found a substitute. Yeah. Not a substitute. I, I, I properly managed my way out of the job. <laughs> he and knew he was doing I'm that like, from the start. Uh, yeah. Listen, Andre, yeah. I know you <laughs> used the substitution jutsu. You guys knew all of this. You used substitution jutsu. Exactly. Yeah. Andre likes to fall asleep on the job a lot, so it's a good thing that <laughs> when we were doing the d uh Polk Challenge, there would be times where like, the camera would just be on me like for five minutes straight, and Christian would be talking, and I had no way to communicate to Andre, but I knew he was asleep at the fucking board outside. <laughs> I mean, that was the same thing I was doing with Joey's stream on commentary some days. They were just so they long. They were long, and heads up without whole cards is so fucking boring. So long, you couldn't, it's so hard to be engaged when you don't have the information in real time, where you can use it to then sort of backtrack well, especially, especially like you're, play, you're, you're watching two tables with a bunch of single raised pots 
where fucking ranges are 80 percent each yeah. and it's like flop goes check check it's like who cares honestly for me show me the me personally i don't mind but that's because i'm just like a nerd for the strat but when you don't have the cards it's hard to go backwards especially at the time when i never played heads up no limit yeah, uh, yeah. strategically more so was just using my six max knowledge which is very different than heads up no limit strat so when you don't have the whole cards you're just kind of sitting there hoping that you have some sort of idea what's going on without actually having most of the entertainment from seeing what's actually happening in real time all you can go off of is the bet sizes and then make your own sort of conclusions as to why the bet sizes exist and then sometimes you get that feedback by showdowns and seeing whole cards but that's kind of it I'm not gonna lie. When you when you're talking about having this idea and you know five days a week, the production that goes into this, the you need someone to switch cameras, know all the live stream stuff, manage the lighting, echoing, microphones, everything. I honestly did not expect this podcast to last as long as it has. Nobody did. <laughs> Join the fucking group. Just because I knew the work that went into it, and I knew getting seven people, whatever it is, in a one room together. When you guys are Landon's going to London, you know Melissa is going to Barcelona, uh, Conrad's doing Everywhere. whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Getting high in his car. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just I knew that it would be a big undertaking, and I think I saw today that it was like 159 episode. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very very impressive, and, and you've had some real bangers of episodes. Like I just watched the Cuz one. Cuz is so, so fucking <laughs> great. So and and I gotta say, like, I thought Cuz is the type of boisterous and loud tournament celebrator that I don't really like. And it's like kind of like the Bill Helmy thing that I was talking about and Daniel like blowing up on people. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, and I, and I gotta say, I didn't really want to like him. Yeah, yeah. But then once I watched the episode, it was kind of an eye opener for myself. It's like, wow, this guy is really great. It's impossible mm -hmm. not Th to like this him. This guy right. is so awesome. And I was judging him based off of my limited blow-ups that i saw yeah, yeah yeah you're not the only one that does that though you know that's it, literally everything seeing from a very small glimpse of who someone is as a person it's so quick to judge and make these sort of claims as to who you think someone is or what they are based off of the things that you don't like like as soon as you look at someone and find what you want to see out of them you'll find it if you well, want it's also, it's also when like people someone. amplify uh those traits right yeah. mm -hmm. like if you're a quiet guy you wouldn't have any reason to dislike him but he's like loud and boisterous and that's the irony is like that's what that's what's so lovable about him he could come and host once a week for a year and i promise you evergreen it would be so evergreen like nothing would change he would tell the same goddamn stories every single time in the same loud tone <laughs> and with the same colorful language and you would still just be dialed in because mm -hmm. He's that dude. Like, he, really he reminds me of, uh, you know, my grandpa sitting on the porch, kicking back a few, telling you about the glory days. And I'm listening because, yeah. like, we all, that, that's the thing that I think uh, as, as a society as a whole with the amplification of social media and things like that, we've, we've lost track of our elders, right? We've, we've lost that looking up to the generation ahead of us. And instead, we've started memeing on them, right? Everything's about OK Boom or whatever. Uh, but there's still a lot of value to derive, if nothing else, than just the sheer and utter life experience. Yeah. Hearing him talk about the 70s and like, you know, gambling as a, as a teenager, young 20 something, it's like, it's very different than my experience as a 20 something getting into this industry, which is also very different than Landon's experience as a 20 something getting into this industry. And Landon's still willing to listen to me because I'm that bridge generation between his parents and himself. Give him 10 years. <laughs> right but that's the thing the yeah. next generation behind mm -hmm. landon won't be willing to listen to me because i'll just be that old dude yeah you know who's been in the game for too long it's and fine man. missed his exit when i uh start hosting the podcast 10 years down the line <laughs> we'll have you on once a week and you can have a <laughs> turkey that. segment i appreciate that it, uh, it is actually going back to like you know uh like finding out who like a personality of a person that you just see on twitter compared to like the podcast the long form podcasts are what are so great because that's when you've, you you really do get to see who somebody is when, when you're talking to them for, you know, an hour, two hours, three yeah. hours. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of mm -hmm. that, actually, his stepdaughter um, commented on that episode and said, you guys don't even know how awesome of a guy this right, cuz yeah. is. So, yeah. like, it was, it was only cool. scratched the surface. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, we missed that. That that's type of stuff falls through the cracks in this industry specifically, right? Like, sure. there are a lot of guys that you talk about on the tour that everybody knows. They're... You know they're 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 like the the local neighbor of sorts but it doesn't really make it to the amplification of people who aren't grinding the mspts and mm -hmm. traveling across the nation so 
uh, it's nice to give guys like cuz a little bit of shine and as far as like the 159 episodes uh i think everybody shared your sentiment uh <laughs> except for me yeah i knew that like once we templated this it was going to be easy and what i don't think anybody understands is that i would have done this fucking thing solo like once we started we and we were that. like 25 episodes in it was not stopping i didn't care who quit I didn't care who stopped coming. Like the whole reason I got seven people to begin with. Every was, day, WPT you know, nice Global is running five hundred and fifty dollars so satellites to win it. But I also knew that it it, it prevented it, the failure. Like it becomes too big to fail. If Brian doesn't want to show up, that's fine. There's somebody else to step in. You know, you you treat it like next man up type of thing. And when we started to get real thin on numbers, and the Robbie J. Lou thing was every fucking day, twice a day. It was like, <laughs> fuck it, we'll go live. I'm doing it myself. I don't care. <laughs> Have you guys yeah. seen the numbers right now? Like, <laughs> we are shit. not taking a day off. It was wild because you, I was like, okay, so we're going to just what, like, like twice, three times a week? You're like, no, it's every day. I'm like, every day? Like, is that really, like, you know what you're getting yourself into? Uh, you eat every day. You, you shit do, every you know, day. Why you not go come, to the gym every day. Why, why not, not kick it yeah, with friends for 90 minutes? Sounds, Would it really great. be episode 159 if I didn't say, wow, 159 episodes? <laughs> no. We've got this far? We would have just, just stopped numbering them a long time mm -hmm. ago. We're almost uh, 41 episodes away from episode 200. Ooh, we can have wow. our, our bicentennial uh review of how we feel about the podcast mm -hmm. as an individual so in we're going to be ending it at union. episode 200 <laughs> the show goes on with or without you man yeah one of the things that makes it so great is you guys are all completely different like mm -hmm. matt is matt obviously the old timey reg who <laughs> is emotionless and you know takes million dollar losses without even cracking a smile or frowning and then you have landon who's just so far down like the path like he's he's so young yeah a and then you have obviously conrad who's got fun. to be young again <laughs> I, I, I remember when uh, i saw you and andrew at the venetian when i said yeah i'm kind of figuring out what i really want to do with my career and then andrew looks at me and goes what the fuck are you talking about you're young as shit like what, what's going on right now what do you mean career yeah it's funny I, I ran into your brother at the bellagio and uh it was a stark reminder that like people are always listening uh, we started chatting or whatever, and he referenced an episode that once he referenced it, I, I, I immediately remembered, uh, like I remembered the actual conversation, but would have never even considered it otherwise. Uh, we were talking about Brewer, and I think your brother had run deep in something uh, maybe this summer or shortly thereafter. So we were talking about uh, how Brewer had been coaching him or whatever, or maybe he was just like thanking Brewer publicly, whatever. Um, I think it was the win. It was the win tournament, probably. Yeah, it might have been the win. Uh, and I was just, like, really gassing up Brewer, saying, like, you know, he's one of the most intelligent people that uh, I know in this game. Like, he's so data-driven. 100%. And uh, I was trying to draw the contrast of, like, why that complements Andrew so well, because I think Andrew is, like, such a good, quote-unquote, feel player. Like, he is really in the moment. And I was trying to highlight that. But in the process of doing so, I said something to the effect of, like, and Andrew's relatively intelligent. <laughs> and like, I didn't mean it in a general sense. I meant it like, you know, yeah. compared to Brewer. Compared and what I was speaking. really trying to highlight was that like, he's a more complete type of intelligence, not just a data driven one, <laughs> but just the word choice that yeah. I made. He said that it like became a meme in his group chat or whatever. <laughs> and I'm just like, who the fuck is listening this closely? Yeah. But like when you mention someone's name, they're going to hear everything mm -hmm. they said right before, or right after that. For Definitely. sure. For sure. Yeah. He's always been kind of, uh, he's always been kind of gangster in like how he plays poker and I, I think that like who you are in life translates to who you are at the poker table so much yeah and i'm the older brother i'm the safe one i was the one that had the computer science degree and was working as a software developer my brother was the one who <laughs> didn't go to college and was playing in bars and, and you know gambling for a living and he's the one that kind of like talked me into playing poker and it still shows up in how we are today like i'm much more safe and, and he's got to coach me into being gangster and i am always you know looking out for him and trying to make sure that he uh, doesn't kill himself <laughs> <laughs> wrapping up this pod i have a question for you human versus mountain lion in a fight to death <laughs> who wins this the human is not being stalked, and they are face to face. This was not my question, no by the way. As no, you can no see, he has, no a, weapons. he has a long way to go for the hosting. Uh, I mean, you got to take the mountain lion. 
What, uh, what kind of question is this? Yeah, no, Why is it a mountain lion? Why wouldn't it be like a, a, a cub bear? Somebody or, put this, um, a poker player put this toll on, uh, you saw put this poll on Twitter you today. You saw this Landon? This no, I, so I, said, I said it wasn't mine. <laughs> I added Landon. I'd still take me, <laughs> but this wasn't mine. Well, I think Wait, the choices you, were like, it was like human, mountain lion, and then like a hu human 25% of the time and human 10% of the time, something like that. 10% is such an overestimate. Like, uh, the poll was more interesting if it's like a porcupine. Yeah, it's like, it's like oh. if you get into a fight with a mountain lion and then you live to tell about it, that's the story. Yeah, I... Right? That, uh, that is the story. Like, like, this guy beat, killed a mountain lion. Dak Shepard does, Shepherd does a podcast and... Uh, he actually has like three or four different versions of it, but one of them is they they do like uh, once a week they do call-ins and it's for some sort of theme. And a couple of weeks ago, the theme was uh, survival of an animal attack. And this guy got fucking mauled by a grizzly Jesus. and lived to tell about it. And just yeah. hearing like hearing him describe, I had to turn it off. <laughs> like he was talking about like how he could hear the crunch of the bones in his arm and that like his arm is just like dangling there hanging on by tendons and somehow like and then they had to like hike out eight miles after the attack was over like half his head is gone and he's just fucking walking it off where in russia was this no no this was in like yosemite Oh my god! It's one of those wow. things. That it's hard to estimate what a person's will to live is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and there was the guy who cut his own arm off. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. that he could survive. As so what, wild to me. What happened? They, they made a movie years. out of it. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. James Franco played the. Yeah. Land is going home to watch this movie right now. It's fucking now. twisted. Twenty-three hours man. or something. He got his hand stuck hours. while he was like bouldering or something. Yeah. In between two two rocks. Oh my god! And he was there for 128 hours. That's what and then he went. No, it was not. No, it, it was. It was, was chiseled. <laughs> oh, so he had like a. He literally had like to a cut knife. It. He created yeah. a tourniquet. He had a dull knife that yeah, he oh like. He had to like break his fucking right. bone, oh, and yeah. then just start like yeah. chiseling away at the flesh. Oh my god! What I can't take it anymore. On what that a beast! Note. Oh my god! <laughs> fucking wow! Uh, yeah. Oh. I would have considered I'm death. I'm a pussy, dude. I would have That's strongly insane. considered death. Uh, wow. I'm, I'm considering death in the chair right now. I can't take it. Thinking <laughs> about my arm coming off. On that note, thanks for rocking with us today. We will be back. Thank you, Johnny, for coming by and hanging thanks, with Johnny. us. That's a so blessing and an honor. Guys. We'll see you again for 200. I think we're just going to like run all run of our guests. past guests. Through. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a local, so you, you guys can uh, call on me whenever. I, I have a lot of fun talking with you guys, and obviously we chatted a little bit about my life today, but... We can talk about anything. I'm down tomorrow. for it all. Yeah. Great. <laughs> you tomorrow? Uh, not tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Come back, please. We need you. All right. Well, on that note, we will be back tomorrow. Thank you for hanging with us. Like, subscribe, comment. Do what you do. Join the Nerds and Brainiacs. That's where we get it popping. Yeah, on that note, while we're talking about cutting off arms. <laughs> I'm actually going to join right now. I'm clicking the yes. join button. Hit the Another fucking join button. You're cutting off your arm to spite your body. John really huh? good at this fucking promotion shit. It's mm -hmm. sick. He's gonna, he's gonna teach, <laughs> give a man a masterclass. That's right. I'll take All it. Right. On that note, we out. Peace. Later.